Hello, this is Crystal Stanich, and thank you for joining me for this week's First Chapter Friday. Today, I will be reading from Jessica Beck's Glazed Murder. Uh, this ties into our Donut Forget to Read a Latte theme for winter reading. If you're not signed up, you have until the end of January to get those minutes logged in the Reader Zone app. Chapter One. Trust me when I say that I usually lead a pretty ordinary life. It's not every day that I stumble across a body while I'm working at Donut Hearts, my handmade donut and premium blend coffee shop, perched on the edge of the downtown district of April Springs, North Carolina, population 5001. But this was anything but ordinary. Someone had dumped a body in front of my shop in the darkness of night as I watched and then sped off into the shadows before I could react to what I'd seen. I work the graveyard shift at the shop. There's no other way to put it. My hours are off kilter in relation to the rest of the world. From 2 a.m. when I mix the first batch of dough until I sweep up and lock the doors sometime around noon, it kills all possibilities of dating after 8 p.m. But I haven't been all that interested in going out since my divorce from my ex-husband, Max, the great impersonator. He's an actor and prides himself on his ability to fake his way through any role, including husband. Something I found out much to my consternation. The man had been so smooth when he lied to me during our marriage that I doubted a polygraph could have picked up his deceit. He had an unsteady income doing nationally distributed commercials now and then. And I'd been urging him to try his luck in Hollywood, not because of his talent, of which there was little, but because it would get him out of my hair once and for all. No such luck. He refused to leave April Springs, the small town in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'd both grown up. And I wasn't about to budge either. Sorry. That's a tangent I'm in no mood to take. Let's get back to what happened. I watched in stunned silence as something heavy was dumped out of a speeding car just after I walked into the shop. As a matter of fact, my hand was on the switch to light the donut heart sign when I heard the noise outside. At 12 past two in the morning, I was used to having the world to myself. Emma Blake, my assistant at the donut shop and my honorary niece, never made it in until 2.30, and she wasn't coming in today at all, since it was her day off. On the one day of the week I was opening by myself and working in the shop all morning alone, the world had conspired to throw my life into turmoil. The presence of the car itself had been enough to make me look up when I heard it outside. We don't get much traffic on Spring, Springs Drive that time of morning. Before I could grasp what I'd seen, I flipped the switch up, lighting the world just outside my shop and turning the shadowy lump lying on the street into what was clearly a body. All I'd really caught of the person dumping the body had been a face covered with a black ski mask and the flash of a faded tiger embossed on a dark hooded sweatshirt. The car door slammed the second I spotted him and the killer drove off before I could manage to do much more than scream as it disappeared into the darkness. And if you would like to know what happens next, you can check this title out on the Libby app. Please join me here next week as I continue with our donut theme with Julie Tu's The Donut Trap. Thank you and have a great week.